Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all between Fred and my brother. How you doing? I'm doing great, Vince. How are you, my friend? All right. We seem to have some, if there's a technical issue, we, who knows, it could be hurricane related, but, uh, you know, just bear with us. But we've got some great it's content right. today, Fred. Yeah. Tell, tell us so what's tonight, going on today, we have a special Fred. edition. Right. We have a special edition of Monday Metal. No video reaction. Instead, we have the amazing pipes of James Durbin. James finished fourth place on American Idol in 2011. I find it hard to believe there are three better vocalists than him on that show. Maybe they were all reincarnation of Robert Plant. But he's done all right for himself since then with a successful solo career, a stint with the legendary Quiet Riot, and now with the melodic old school metal band Clean Break, who have their sophomore album, We Are the Fire, set for release on Friday, October 11th on Frontier Records. So let's please welcome to Monday Metal, the magical voice that is James Durbin. What's up, James? Hi, James. What's up? How's the intro, Fred? Thank you. You know, is it, it's almost Doing better good. not to yeah. win American Idol, isn't it? Not to be the number one spot. It seems people seem to do better all around if they don't take the top spot. That that is the that is that seems to be the 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 collect. to win you know you don't become a professional wrestler to not become all right you're uh james your audio is uh cutting out here destination gotcha gotcha uh, yeah you know um is it is it better for the people all right how about now it? yeah now it's great is it better like it seems if if you're in pop okay. it's better if you're in pop music if you take the top, so, but like a lot of people don't take the number one spot, wind up doing better in the long run, which is, you know, so sometimes you root for your person not to win. And I stopped watching American Idol. After, <laughs> I stopped watching after you performed with Judas Priest because nothing was going to top that. <laughs> well, hey, that. Now that was the finale. So you had no choice, but <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was crazy. I mean, I, I have friends that, uh, you know, my buddy Caleb Johnson, he won season 15. Yeah. Um, you know, I I can I can imagine it hasn't necessarily been easy. Um, but also, I know that, like, the show was in a different point at that time. The music industry yeah. was in a different point at that time. So it's it's really all it's all chance. It's all luck. Right. Fortunately, uh, in 2011, rock music was was you know active rock music was still um it, it still had a place right um and my first album sold 40,000 copies in its first week so that was in 2011 and that's like physical copies right. and and downloads so uh um streaming wasn't really a thing yet spotify hadn't come out yet so right you know it was it was a different world uh we had like an, a walmart exclusive with the cd and it sold a lot and went a lot of places. So um, four years, a lot changed in the music industry. And uh, but, yeah, I think like my my second album that I did. And there goes the breaker. Uh, my second album that I did. Sorry for the darkness um, was uh, was a pop album. And um, and that still has my my most streamed and highest streamed song called Parachute, which has you know, almost 3 million streams. So um, yeah. it's hard to say, like, is would there be more if streaming was around right. four years earlier, maybe? But, you know, who knows? It, yeah, it was a, like, I remember when, uh, you know, the whole f first with the file sharing came out and everyone's like, oh, and then everyone gave Lars a hard time for speaking out. And he was right <laughs> on the money. You know, like at that time, I was working on a uh, software yeah. thing that ena enabled people to jam in real time over the phone line. And we did a thing with Herbie Hancock. His band was in Sheffield, England. He was in Vegas. They wow. jammed together. And then we did a thing with G3. We had all the guys. And the VP of wow. Sony Music comes in. He goes, great. How do you win? How do you win? Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah, like we just, it took us eighteen months to get that meeting, and we just packed everything up, and that's why the music industry died because 
you need younger people running it, period. It's okay to have older right. executives, but, you know, with technology, they had no clue, you know, and it was just people robbing the bank right behind them, you know. And unfortunately, yeah. the last person to get paid, as you know, is the <laughs> right. there's, there's always going to be. <laughs> Now, yeah. How, how, yeah. how intense yeah, was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, how intense was it uh, as a young man playing with Judas Priest on stage? I mean, not losing your nerve. I mean, I, mean, I was that's... still – I mean, there was – you know, you, you can't have a lot of nerve. Uh, right. It's um, – it's... luckily, I got to have a dinner with the band – um, before we did the performance. So yeah. the, you know, by the time we got to the stage, it was my, you know, for the live show, it was my third time or fourth time um, okay. yeah. with them. And so after the dinner and then some rehearsals. And so I was, I was warmed up, you know, okay. it was just the usual regular TV nerves of lights, camera action. Right. Um, so yeah, for, fortunately, but that first dinner, that was like, Oh my gosh, what's there going to be? Like, I didn't know Rob was sober and, you know, sure. I, I didn't know that like, it wasn't going to be like, you know, there wasn't going to be like male dancers and like right. <laughs> mountains of cocaine and <laughs> lobster and, you know, right. Uh, <laughs> Darn cocaine it. With Darn a side of lobster tail. <laughs> and uh, it was all really nice. It was just the band and their manager yeah. and, and uh, you know, everyone's sipping tea and, and talking softly and, light music playing in the background and it was yeah. it was just so so beautiful um so that was really nice it was like nice to meet people on a human level because that was a big part of idol was like going in there and and having this big crazy experience and people come in and they're just like yeah so this is a crazy experience you know previous idols always came in and and yeah. and came in with advice came in with wisdom and um and that was really grounding you know that was really grounding. If it had happened at the beginning of the season, yeah, all bets are off. You know, I would have been like, oh, my God, this shit is priest. And I still was to a certain point, but I also had something to prove. But I also yeah. felt like, well, Judas Priest wanted to sing with me, so we're equals. You That's know, in awesome. a way. Yeah. That's respect right there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, and, it was very and, cool. And and you got to do a song with Zach Wild too, on top of it, on another episode. How amazing is that? <laughs> that, one, you guys that one was me singing those it to the man. That one was, uh, I put that one together. So uh, luckily, I didn't have to do the uh, the liaison between uh, Judas Priest and myself. But with Zach Wild, I did. Um, I was cool. hanging out with Chris yeah. Jericho, and I really wanted a way to stick it to Jimmy Iovine of Interscope Records, um, who said if I sang you know, uh, heavy metal by Sammy Hagar, I would just be a Sammy Hagar wannabe. And I was just like, dude, we are on a TV show where we're singing covers. Why is it like, if I sing Elton John last week, I'm not an Elton John wannabe. I'm, obviously, I'm singing his song, you know, in a way that he sings it. Yeah. I'm not changing all the melodies and shit. But like, so, you know, doing Sammy Hagar and doing it justice. Yeah. And of course, you want to like, have a little bit of that Sammy there. Um sure. You know, that's being respectful. He's like, no, nah, you're going to sound like a wannabe and a ripoff. I was like, okay, well, um, I'm going to, I'll show you. I'll show you and, and I'll be the one laughing. So I talked to Chris and I was like, hey, I know you're friends with Zach. Do you think that Zach would want to, would be interested or willing to to appear with me on Idol and yeah. play guitar on heavy metal? Um, and he was like, well, I can put you in touch with his manager, which is his wife, Barb. And so I started communicating with Barb. And then when I almost had it locked in, I was like, okay, hold on. I need to get permission from idol. And so then I went to the producers and I was like, Hey, I have Zach wild on line one, <laughs> you know, and he's gonna, <laughs> uh, he's willing to, to appear with me and play with me on this song. Um, uh, will you guys allow it? Will you sign the check? And uh, they did. So that was all my doing, um, which was nice. pretty cool. I was very ambitious. I was very ambitious on that show. Cause I saw, Every week that I was still there was an opportunity for yeah. me to be there the next week, you know, right. and in order to do that, I needed to, uh, you know, really take uh, advantage of that opportunity and use the studio 
uh, and, and bend it to my will, you know, you right. come out of the, the, the big, um, the big industrial doors one week being like, how come no one ever enters through one of those? Or like, can we get like dry ice? Can we do, can we do a thrust going from the stage to the judges desks, like a catwalk where I stand in their faces, you know, <laughs> and like uh, different things, you know, a drum line, or can I bring stairs from the top of the stage and come down from the audience above the stage and go right. into Probably the most audience. People bring the show to the that. people. They're so nervous about the performance. Yeah. They're not worried about the staging and the, that's great. Yeah. Very, very smart. So and I definitely look when I, when I walk back, when I watch back and, and, you know, there's definitely things where I'm like, Ugh, what am I, I should have been paying attention to the vocals there a little bit more. Maybe I would have lasted another week, but where I ended up and the opportunities and everything that happened uh, yeah. since then, you know, that didn't happen for the person that placed third. Right. Um, I mean, she's had a hell of a career. Uh, don't get me wrong, but the opportunities coming off of the show, like she wasn't necessarily able to go do Jimmy Fallon and uh, right. Ellen and all the, you know, Good Morning America and Regis and all the different places that I got to go to um, having finished fourth. It was it was all meant to be everything uh, that's happened has happened because it needed to. Right. Huh? And I, I dig the stories of uh, you, you sneaking out and uh <laughs> <laughs> I was watching an interview where you're going through that where, uh, you know, they didn't know you're out. You'd show back up at the hotel and security be like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We went, to, uh, I went and snuck out and went to see, uh, I went with Chris Jericho also. Um, yeah. Uh, he had the keys, but we went and saw Stevie Nicks and Rod Stewart at the oh, Hollywood yeah. Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a, that was a crazy one. We'd go to the rainbow. We'd go meet up at the rainbow uh, bar and grill on sunset go sit at the do booth and eat mozzarella sticks right or go to boa steakhouse <sighs> and meet up with other wrestlers i remember um, one time and, I, know, I went dinner the with rainbow. other wrestlers and i'd be sitting there just like trying to keep my cool i remember one time i met yeah, one rainbow. time at the rainbow yeah there's and, a lot uh, of those nights lemmy's sitting at the bar playing poker and John Entwistle is just hanging out by the door, always with one foot up, leaning against the door. I'm like, what is going on here? You know, but uh, <laughs> totally cool place. And you're, you're a huge wrestling fan, right, James? You're a huge. Oh, yeah, wrestling. yeah. Mass wrestling fan. Yeah. Yeah. So, FDR, I've, got a quite, I've got a story for you. So Randy Macho Man Savage is from the town I'm in. And so, really? my buddy, yeah, so my buddy, my buddy grew up next to Randy, you know, and uh, so Randy <laughs> comes to show his new wife or girlfriend the house he grew up in. And it's Sunday morning, 30, <laughs> right? And my buddies, you know, he sees them, they talk and stuff at the front porch and he goes to his house next door. And he knocks on the door and the dad answers the door. He's like, hey, I'm Randy. You know, he's like, yeah, I know who you are. And what wound up happening, <laughs> he's like, hey, can I see my old room? He goes, yeah, my son's in there, hung over, sleeping. Kick the door in. <laughs> <laughs> but he literally woke up to his door being kicked off the hinges. Oh, yeah, get up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know? <laughs> can you imagine waking oh up trying God, to figure out what's going on? You know? <laughs> But wrestling, we have a lot of wrestling here in Chicago. We have a lot of, I think we have two different, uh, we have a women's league and then we have two other leagues that are smaller than, you know, than the big guys. But wrestling's always been huge in yeah. Chicago. Oh, but, always has, yeah. So James, yeah, yeah, ever asked, I mean, ever asked you to get the, in the uh, ring? Ever asked in the ring i've i've done a music video in the ring i've done a couple things with wwe over the years um uh i took a uh yeah i i, I took a fall in a in a mexican ring uh in mexico that i felt that for for a while oh. i took a pretty heavy bump uh at coming out of the corner but um yeah not not so much i i, I bruise easily yeah, it's still canvas yeah. when you land. It doesn't matter how springy it's, it is. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'd like to show you my. I, I gotta get I, this I, turn right yeah, yeah. I had a fan of mine. I just went and played a show in Ohio, and uh, a fan of mine presented me with a custom made. Oh, dude! Championship belt. Uh, nice. commemorating my 
commemorating my second Durban album. Scream That's Steel. awesome. Very cool. So, super that rad. Way Just cool. Leather and zinc and metal plates and all the works. Super rad. So you're from Santa Cruz, That's so you're also cool. a huge Lost Boy fan. And so this is from was oh, it yeah. Lost Boy days. Oh uh, yeah, that was one of our. Uh, that was from one of our shows. I have a cover, a cover band in Santa Cruz called the Lost Boys. We've been a band oh, for okay. going on eleven years. Uh, that was taken at the Santa Cruz Wharf, which is just above the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Um, after uh, yeah, that was after one of our shows. That's uh, that's our merch right there. But yeah, we we had uh, we just celebrated. I think yesterday or or the day before was the uh, the one year anniversary of uh, James Durbin and the Lost Boys Day in Santa Cruz. We got uh, we got a plaque from the mayor um, who uh, made it official that that day was Santa Cruz Day or it was uh, Lost Boys Day in Santa Cruz. So that was pretty special. That's awesome. And Lost Boys being one of the best vampire movies ever made. Oh yeah, sure you know, was. easily sure hands down. Uh, so, so uh, what city in Ohio good. were you in? My daughter's from Ohio. Were you? What city were you touring playing in? I was playing a uh, a '80s Christian heavy metal festival in Versailles, Ohio, in okay. the middle of a cornfield. Okay. Right on. <laughs> it was great. It was it was a lot of fun. So, mention in touring, are you are you out touring as a solo act? Or are you uh, got anything going with Clean Break? Uh, for all intents and purposes, Clean Break is a studio project. Um, okay. You know, there's, there's probably no way we're ever going to be able to tour it just because Mike Flintz is with Riot, uh, Riot, Riot V, um, and they tour all the time. And, and Mike is also in uh, a bunch of cover and tribute groups like I am. Um, he has one called, I think they're called the New York Bee Gees. Um, that's awesome. That's real, that keeps him real busy out there. So it's 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 a it's a wonderful uh, 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 contrast, uh, similar to what I do. I, I play in eight bands currently. Um, so you know, it's I I my philosophy was I always wanted to be a working musician, right. and it's, I get really bored doing the same thing over and over. So I really need to change things up. And uh, any given week, I'm playing with a, a number of different bands. So um that that keeps things fresh and fun and uh yeah and a lot me, and a lot more people and, and a lot more people are doing that you know like we had michael sweet on the show and we're yeah. with michael and we're like i'm like even thinking about your schedule book gives me anxiety like i <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know i joked around while we we're doing the intro that during the intro he recorded three albums you know, just, I mean, probably <laughs> did. If he didn't record them, he probably signed the deals. Yeah. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, of course they're yeah, celebrating they... 40 years, but, uh, one of the, yeah. one of the songs that I heard you cover, it's been one of my song, one of my favorite songs since I was a little kid. And it's a by Chicago artist, Alvin Bishop. Full oh, around and fell in love. What a Fools great around. song, man. That what that is a, a uh, that song. is a that is a difficult song to sing. The great Mickey Thomas from Starship uh, yeah. did the vocals on that record, and uh, yeah, I, I heard that one. And and um, I'm in a couple bands, obviously, <laughs> uh, as I've mentioned. Um, but one in particular is uh, a yacht rock band uh, that I sit in with from time to time, and uh, they're called Mustache Harbor. And so it's it's all yacht rock, '70s soft rock. Uh, you know, dad rock, boat music, um, right. Doobie, Doobie Brothers, Styx, Kenny Loggins, uh, Ambrosia, you know, nice. just all this like really like it's 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 laughable by the cheese factor, but man, the level of musicianship great. and yeah. the harmonies and just the the way that those songs are constructed is yeah. is baffling, and it's a lot of fun to deconstruct them and to uh, present them live. With I had three, a friend, yeah, I had a friend come over singers. a few months ago, and he comes in. He goes, "Are you listening to Eddie Rabbit?" I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm glad, glad you brought up on that, Sammy that. Johns. You know Sammy Johns. Sammy Johns? Uh huh. Sammy uh, Johns. Yeah, look up uh, Sammy Johns. Chevy yeah. Van was his big hit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he picks up some hitchhiker song. and they make love in the back of his of his Chevy, <laughs> of his van. 
made love. Oh, James, I'm glad you brought up. Such a creepy song. I'm glad you brought up covering that. Uh, <laughs> so covering uh, that uh, Alvin Bishop song, and I, I've seen your videos, and you've covered some incredible vocalists: Hard Journey, Priest, Foreigner, Alter Bridge. Is there any? Uh, singer out there that you're in absolute awe of that you might say i don't even think i want to attempt to cover this vocalist yes, yes. um but it's you know unfortunately uh, i don't have to worry about singing his songs because uh, i don't know any of them but it's um it's uh, dean castronova oh yeah Dean's dean monster, has the, dean has the most incredible voice i've ever heard in my entire life yeah his voice is amazing it, it is just, it is, it is all of my favorite. It, it's all my favorite things wrapped into one, you know, yeah. it's, it's just, it's a uh, God. It's just, it's un it's unbeatable in my book. Um, and, and the fact that the way that he plays drums and sings, right. Um, I did this benefit last year with a group called the Merkins out here. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's a, uh, if you know the Merkins, it's yes, uh, a, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a kind of a local Dublin, California, Bay Area, East Bay supergroup uh, headed up by Mr. Phil Demmel, um, formerly of uh, Machine Head. And um, Phil's kind of like, you know, Phil's just the guy. You need a guy? Phil's the guy. Oh, I know a guy. Um, <laughs> and anything heavy metal. So <laughs> right. uh, Dean joined us. Uh, I did my first jam with the Merkins last year. And I'm going to do it again this year in December. Um, and uh, Dean, God, dude, I got to first listen to him play separate ways on the drums and then uh, and then listen to him sing um, Stand Up and Shout uh, from uh, Heaven and Hell and yeah. also um, Love Gun, I think. And I was just like, oh, my God. Just like <laughs> listening to him sing on like Still They Ride and right. Mother Father and uh patience and like just god just those those brilliant journey songs that uh that are just yeah just under oh, you know, and, yeah, undervalued of, underplayed of journey, like people really don't understand if you don't sing you don't people don't understand like people are giving rnl such a hard time what first of all he's got one of the biggest gigs you can get he's done great he's an amazing talent yeah and you know he had an off night whatever is going on maybe the in-ears were out whatever Give the guy a break, man. Like, you know, what a great band. And the pressure, you know, you have a bad night. You got to, you know, muscle through it. And it's not always easy. Yeah. I mean, you know, you you look back in history um, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, you know, right. even 10 years ago. Like, artists didn't have to hear all the bullshit from... Right, you know, quote unquote fans. Right. Also, there's there's an easy thing. I don't know what it's like. I I had a situation with with Quiet Riot, um, where I happened to let the audience sing, and we happened to be recording a live album, and uh, they didn't have any microphones on the audience, which I found oh, out shit. later. Right. Um, so I got some <laughs> I got some shit for that. But um, <laughs> if you if you listen to the live album, you can just barely hear them. And I was just like, why don't we just overdub it? I mean, that, if it's a real live album, we're gonna do all sorts of overdubs. We didn't, but right. um, but I you know he could always put the mic out to a crowd of 150 thousand people at you know Rock and Rio that know the right. words to every word to Don't Stop Believing, at least the right. melody if they don't know the the words, but guarantee they know it. Sure. Um, and and I'm pretty sure there's enough people there that you'd be able to pick them up on the microphones. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's 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 no. I mean, I imagine that they're playing "Don't Stop Believing" last, so he just played at least an hour set of right. all Journey songs that were written mo mainly by, you know, the vocals mainly written by Steve Perry, who right. when you go back and listen has one of the highest, purest, most yeah. beautiful voices that's ever existed on God's green earth. Um, aside from Dean Castronova, but, uh, <laughs> but right. he's doing the same, you know? Um, I mean, also you could throw it to Dean, you know, like, ah, my right. voice is cut now. I, I don't know how it is in that band, you know, I, right. I can only imagine, but, um, yeah, having to, having to do that every night 
and, yeah. and you just got off of a plane, you're right. jet lagged, you, you've been right. breathing compressed air, recycled air on a plane, right. uh, canned air, and uh, you get somewhere and, and you know, you don't know if the pollen's in the air and it's affecting him or if he's tired or, or you know, just whatever. It's There's right. so many different factors that go into this. And then on top of it, you're singing journey songs. Right. You know, I, right. it's hard for me to sing two journey songs in a row. You and, know, and the, let alone right. an entire set and then sing Don't Stop Believing. And the other thing, too, is the younger audience, they've come up with people using tracks. Yeah. So when they see a band perform, perform, yeah, they're like, what's going on? What, what? You know, like, yeah, that happens sometimes. Like, well, we went and saw Van Halen with David Lee Roth, and my son's <laughs> asking why Dave is bitching at the guy <laughs> got the air conditioner on because it's hitting his neck. <laughs> So he could get a cold in his neck, and then it, you know, all of a sudden now he got sinus issues, and he's trying to sing Van Halen songs. So he was getting really ticked off about it. But people That's don't know that. Stuff. People have no idea. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's not I like a guitar, and you can just yeah. put it through a pedal or crank something up. You gotta, yeah, it is what it is, man. Yeah, I so, think that's Dave. I think that's Dave being Dave. But well, uh, that that too, you know. I'm gonna get a cold in my neck. You know. Just, <laughs> freaking out on someone for no big deal <laughs> exactly okay i got a question for you. i'm a huge grease fan oh nice and so did you learn anything performing the lead role in grease when you did it when you were younger is there anything that you pulled from that that you didn't get from the, i've seen the movie at least a thousand times the musical is very different from the movie right they don't have the same songs so that's what right. I learned. <laughs> I, gotcha. I got in it. I was like, oh, man, I get to sing. You know, the, there's these great songs, Grease Lightning. Yeah, like, of course, we're going to sing Grease Lightning. There's no Grease Lightning. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different. Ah, no, nope, whoever, different whoever saw the play first was like, all right, this is a this is a good idea, but we're going to change everything. Right. <laughs> it's, it's very, very different. But um, that was like a. If you if that was something I learned uh, at that age was if you get the lead role as the guy you get to kiss the girl. So <laughs> that, that was like, ooh, no one wants to kiss me otherwise. Right? You know, like I fool them all. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Okay, so uh, on your new album with Clean Break, uh, what was the writing process like? Did you have a set of songs mm -hmm. already percolating? Because this is album number two, or did you just get together? You have a writing session, boom, boom. You know, neither. Uh, with this album, all of the songs were written for me and and delivered. And oh, and one day yeah. I open an email and they're like, "All right, here's the album. Learn the songs, sing them, send them back." Um, That's yeah. totally cool. <laughs> there's there's uh, no romance there um with the first album with the first clean break album so when i signed my deal with frontiers in late 2019 um i basically had all of 2020 to make my first durban album which is called uh, the beast awakens and i wrote every song every riff every vocal every melody everything every lyric all of it yeah. um and and got friends to come in and play guitar solos and got a brilliant bass player uh, barry sparks to write phenomenal uh bass lines for everything um but i have a hundred percent writing credit on that whole album so with the first clean break album i had i i came up with the band name because it was based on a song that i wrote called clean break which was one of our singles um and then i co-wrote another song with alessandro de vecchio called dream forever and then um a third song on I'm trying to remember the first album. Uh, I wrote two of the songs on the, the other one was before the fall. So two full com uh, compositions and then one co-write um, on the first clean break album with this one. I was also coming off of a Durban album, uh, screaming steel, my second Durban album again, hundred percent songwriting credit on it and the whole album. And, uh, and wrote a few songs and pitched them and contributed them. And, and, uh, they weren't chosen. So uh, with with that said, I think that the songs that were chosen for this album are better than the ones that I had written, uh, uh, you know, in their place. So um, and, and it is a lot of fun being given songs 
Um, it's more fun being given songs and being able to be like, no, nah, I don't want to do that one. But it's uh, it is fun <laughs> still to be given songs um, because there was a couple on here that uh, that were just like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I get to sing that. Right. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Um, there's a song in, in particular called Love Again uh, on on this album, the second yeah. Clean Break album that I sang that song. I tried getting that vocal performance like five to ten times of different days coming into the studio and being like, OK, I think I got it now. That was the first one I tried and the last one that I nailed and committed and, and sent the vocal. So um and the first single that we put out, uh, Warriors Anthem, that one was uh, that one was really fun to to shape and figure out, putting that super randomly hitting that uh, ultra high note in there um, out of the bridge and doing that bridge of arise and and getting that guttural yell kind of thing. My wife came in, she was like, "You're gonna throw your voice out if you keep doing that." I was like, "No, I know what I'm doing." There's like, there's a destination here. I'm just right. trying to like get the right take of this sound because I'm never going to have to do it live ever again. So I need to like <laughs> make sure <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a, there's a fondness to that when you get right. to just commit something and be like, there's, n there's no chance. There's, n you know, there's no chance in hell that I'm ever going to have to sing this uh, live that the, the, you know, all the pieces are going to come together. And, and yeah. I just, I just, I completely doubt that that's ever going to happen um, uh, for better or worse. And, and for the better uh, is that I can, you know, sing things um, in ways that I don't have to sing tomorrow, you know, right. or for the rest of the week. So that, that was right. a, that was a fun part of it. You know, frontiers does a lot of cool interest, you know, thank goodness for frontiers and a few other labels like that, that are keeping everyone signed, working on projects, mixing it up. Uh, yeah. some, really, some really interesting pairings come out of Frontiers that just, you know, like, yeah, you know, like when, when Clean Break first came out, we're like, we covered Coming Home. We reacted to Coming Home because we're like, you know, it was nice to see the guys, to the guys from Striper play on something else because Michael's yeah. on so five different things. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oz and, gets around too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Barry and, uh, and Robert, really not. Absolutely. And uh, so it's it's really cool to see that, you know, someone's out there caring because, you know, I don't know what's going on with the big labels now with this whole thing going on with the rap industry. Oh, so we have it's an interesting time in the music business because you have all the legacy bands retiring or aging out. So yeah, now that's billions of dollars lost in revenue unless right. someone fills those spots. Now, with all the controversy going around with that, and I won't we won't have to get into it. Everyone knows if you, you know how much is going to be lost there as well like so like right now the music business for the it's in turmoil it seems yeah yeah it's you really know. interesting it's it's uh it's weird as like as someone that you know i mean i sang with a legacy group for a little bit yeah uh with quiet riot and contributed to their legacy and and right. um and uh I like to think so having done three albums with them, but um, you know, right. <laughs> for, for whatever that's worth, not much, I guess, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a trip, you know, it's, it's yeah. Seeing all these bands just, and, but, but it's, it's weird. It's like, I know that for me, I've been thinking about this lately for me, I'm 35, I think 35. And am I? yeah 35 and um like i i listen to these bands and i'm just like when I, when i think of aerosmith for instance i think of aerosmith not as a bunch of guys in their mid 70s like i still right. think of them like in their late 50s you know like from when i first when i first got into aerosmith yeah. and like you know it's my idea of those guys isn't when i look at them now it's right. like I was thinking about it last night, Johnny Depp. I was like, when I think of Johnny Depp, I think of him looking like this. I think of him in this way. And then right. I looked at, I saw a picture of him yesterday and I was like, that's not who I think of when I think of Johnny Depp. You know? Whoa. Like, Get a mustache on that guy, quick. Um, and where's, where's all of his scarves and rings and bracelets? Um, you know, he needs a mustache. Quick, give him a goatee. Um, 
but yeah, it's 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 a trippy it's a trippy thing, you know, seeing all your heroes grow up and right. uh, and 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 pass away and 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 just everything and and have to like cut back or have to like stop entirely. It's it's right. really it's a really wild wild thing. And you we've know, been having an ongoing like, discussion of yeah. uh, you know cover bands versus original music, and you know, like I have friends <laughs> who are like. Oh, I have my own band. I'm like, well, do you want to be a working musician or play in your basement? You know, because if you're not, in yeah, the- do you want to make money or work three jobs? Yeah, if you yeah. want to be a working musician, then you're going to have to cover. But they don't call orchestras cover bands, right? Exactly. You know, maybe we should change that term to standard rock standards because everyone's going to want to hear Led Zeppelin. Everyone's going to want to hear Aerosmith, Van Halen, and now there's there's uh, festivals where it's all tribute bands. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on some. Obviously, it's a huge business. It's going to be, you know, so that's a great thing. So that music won't go away. Yeah. You know, but is there. No, it's definitely not going to go away. It's, it's, I mean, the way that, uh, for all intents and purposes, when I was in Quiet Riot, I wanted to sing the songs not to sound like Kevin DeBro, but to perform them like Kevin DeBro, to give them the same intensity. You know, sure. there was for a while, um, there was a lot of and good vocalists, good voices, but they sounded just like Kevin's. Right. And I knew that I did, for one, didn't sound like Kevin at all, but that I could sing high and he sang high. So what was the what was like the difference there? Like, what was yeah. what was different about it? You know, is like singing it with intention, singing it with intensity. And right. being like kind of wild and goofy and crazy, and you know, it's it's all for the sake of the audience. So it right. doesn't matter if my if my ass hurts tomorrow or my feet hurt, and you know, I'm walking with a limp tomorrow. If I gave yeah. everything to that audience, and I had right. them in the palm of my hand last night. Right. Like that's that's why they bought a ticket, yeah. or they, you know, got a babysitter and came to the festival, or they bought a hot dog at, at the Bratwurst yeah. Festival in Sheboygan. You know, <laughs> or like whatever they nice. supported, and they're here. You know, they're here. They want to be entertained. People go to things because they want to be entertained. They work hard, and they spend their hard-earned money on experiences because they want to be experienced. Yeah. So that's what's so fun about playing with cover and tribute bands is the work is pretty much already done. They know the songs. They right. know the words. You just right. gotta sing them with in tension and and just you know believability you don't sing them like uh, all right uh, i'm singing i'm singing white snake again here we go again let's uh it's you right. just gotta like you gotta give it to them like they've never heard it before yeah. or like it's the first time they've heard it because if they're if they if they're expecting to hear it like they know it like it's white snake you right. gotta like find that spot in your voice that's a little bit david coverdale you gotta sing it with intensity and like if there's any in between if there's any letdown you give them the microphone you let them sing you know it's 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 this beautiful sort of uh um wave it's like surfing i've never surfed before but i've 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 seen it i live in a in a surfing town and uh god knows and where the wetsuit was invented and perfected by jack o'neill and like I, I see it and it's it's this it's this um it's this marriage of sorts it has to work together yeah you know you are not above the audience you, you, you know if if you want the show to to work and create a moment for yourself and for the people there it's like you have to you have to work together and they don't know that that you're working together that's the fun part about it for right me. right yeah because there's such a huge part of the show and singing with the band like quiet riot for instance everybody knows those songs you know and with yeah. with with kevin a lot of it great voice but a lot of it was in his manic stage presence and his eyes yeah like, in his, his eyes, eyes exactly. a lot you know his I used to eyes and his him. hands his arms. yeah literally you know, just run was, into him huge. all the time at rock and roll ralph's like every week when i lived in hollywood every week i'd run nice. into kevin you know but yeah that that uh pass right there is from uh, johnny kelly right there yeah from but saw those guys. Me and Fred went and saw the. Yeah, Johnny Rock. Kelly's kicking ass on drums up there. Alex Grassi, 
Rudy Sarzo and, and, and Jizzy Pearl and, and they're still killing it. I mean, that, yeah. that band, you know, people, people always want to say like when a, when a member passes away, they want to say like, Oh, just lay it to rest already. The, the internet community and the, the internet fans and whatever they want to call themselves that just like to, you know, dish out garbage and talk shit and, and like, uh, you know, want people to stop. Yeah, yeah, and want people to stop supporting their families and keeping the legacy of something alive That's isn't to, to put it to rest. You don't keep a legacy alive by putting it to rest. You keep a legacy alive by reminding people why it's a legacy in the first place. Yeah, and you know, I mean, there's 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 no reason why it needs to. You know, right. there's um, there you can get a young singer to fill in on anything you look at foreigner dude mick jones gave foreigner he, g- oh, yeah. he gave it away he gave it to who to dana strum he gave it to, uh, i think like he's just like yeah you do this now you know and yeah. uh it, yeah, Jeff, you, know, you guys Jeff are Wilson now. doing the uh ba- the managing the all the musicians Wilson, on yeah. stage and you know and now they're yeah <laughs> now they're playing with not <laughs> any i gotta choose myself for yeah. i'll be right back be right, right. back yeah, so I got guys we, working at my house and they're knocking on my door. Be right so, back. Keep it going. Be right back. <laughs> now, you, now, you you have members, now you have people, uh, you have bands playing that don't have any original members, but Frank Sinatra didn't write one single song. Yeah, neither did Elvis. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's like it, people assume they know because of the mystery that used to be around all the performers. Now we know every time, you know, we know every time James Durbin shaves or, you know, he goes from a beard to a goatee. It's everything. Yeah. Every minutia is recorded and, you know, and, I almost like a little bit of mystery, you know? You know? Yeah. It's, you know, it, social media is, is good in a way that you're right. able to let people know about things. Yeah. And, and, you know, that in that way, it's good. There's just a lot of like, you would talk about things with your friends if you yeah. like, I used to watch wrestling uh, as a teenager and in between and during commercials, I'd call my best friend on the phone and we'd talk about what happened, like what, what we liked, what we didn't like. And I guess that's what it is now, but it's just like, you know, if, if a, if a movie comes out and a fan, a fan community doesn't like who was cast in the role, right. You know, they could get the whole freaking thing changed around. So it's like, it's not the it's not the viewers and the listeners' job to right. be a producer or a director. It's your right. job to be a viewer. Just go see the thing, right. and not you know not run it through so many different filters to where it's not even enjoyable for you anymore. Right, like, like, that's like you're a, you're like a Star Wars happening. fan and a and a comic book fan too, right? Yeah, I just just enjoy things. Not everything yeah. is going to be made Downey for me. Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom. Are you kidding me? Yes. But it's like <laughs> it's not gonna suck. You know? Oh no, not at all. It's gonna be great. Like, what a what a nice suck. move. He commits to everything, and you know, yeah. if if they were like, if he was the best person that they tested, and you know, that right. read for the role and seemed like they do a great job and can bring a different life and meaning to the character, it doesn't matter. They played Iron Man. Iron Man's dead. Right. Iron exactly. Man and Doctor Doom. Like, yeah, maybe they, you know, maybe he gets to play the villain against somebody else playing Iron Man. Right. Which that's a cool dynamic because Doctor Doom Absolutely. would know everything about Iron Man. He would know his enemy, right. you know. So who knows more about Iron Man than than than, than Robert Downey Jr.? So oh, absolutely. Hopefully, there's something like that, you know. And and it's like, as a fan, you want to speculate. As a fan, if it doesn't hit all of your your marks, it's not only made for you. You know, right. it's just right. just enjoy what you're there to enjoy and uh, and and, you know, be open to anything else. But th- right. That's how I like to live life. I don't like to be like yeah. such a such a such a, you know, such a pet, let's, pessimistic. Let's talk about the Internet a little bit. Uh, the 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 toxicity that comes along with some like we don't we don't do any gotcha stuff. If, when we when we cover something, if we don't like the song, we're not going to put it out because we're not going to bash anyone's attempt to make art. <laughs> yeah, because. My favorite song you could hate, but it doesn't matter. But we don't want to yeah. do that to any artist because it's not fair. Right. We don't think it's fair. But yeah, like, for instance, well, I used James to, I used Hunt, to, you know, 
James Gunn is coming up with yeah, DC and I used and to trying to smash it down already. It's like, dude, give him a chance to release his first film. Like, come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I used to have that kind way, of attitude. The coolest action figure I've gotten recently. What is that one? Oh man, are you Justice kidding? League? Doctor Fate, yeah. Doctor Fate. Yeah, man. Uh, Pierce Bronson <laughs> played him uh, in the movie with the, you know, the other version. But uh, oh yeah, what do you got? About He's going to show you his. Oh. <laughs> Red Turbo Tornado. Man. Turbo Man from Jingle oh, All the Way. Why did I think? Well, Red Tornado's close. Let's see here. But this this is a... Oh, look this at was this. It's a competition Funko. now. <laughs> That's awesome. So this, man. You, you, you can't beat this one. So this actually has my voice in it. I did the voiceover for this action figure release. That is... That's cool. Yeah. I cannot that. <laughs> Good work, Booster. Beware of evil doers. Where you can always count on me. Good work. You can. Good work. Beware. Beware. You can. You can. Good work. Good work. Come on. Where's the? <laughs> Come on. Say the thing. Good work. Good work. It's turbo time. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> nice man. It lights up. That's that's a first for our show. That's really cool. Oh, it lights up too. Way. So how do you like doing voiceover He's, work? Yeah. It's definitely fun. I mean, that's to make so, a lot of most of what I've done, you can't hold in your hands. So to have something like yeah. that, that you can actually hold, it's like making a record, you know, you actually get yeah. to hold it. Um, you, you can't hold a stream. You can't right. hold a download. You know, you can, you can hold a CD. I still make CDs. Right. I still, you know, it's, um, it's important. You know, yeah, it's, like we're, it's nice we had, to be uh... able to, we yeah, you make a baby, you get to hold the baby and kiss the baby and love the baby, you know. So we had uh, Ron Keel on last week, and uh, nice. So he's talking Keel. about uh, Keel World, and he pulls out the this <laughs> comic book for the liner notes, and it's oh. like, so we had a whole thing about liner notes. What these young fans they don't know what they're missing, man. Sitting on the couch, reading the liner notes, listening to every track, and one of the things I've been doing lately, if someone, one of my friends, is having a bad day, I'm like, hey, go home. Listen to an entire album from A to Z. Don't get up, sit in a chair, have a cup of coffee, whatever, and just listen to the whole thing. Yeah. And trust me, your your day will get better, you know? Yeah. Everyone's Yeah, even if it's uh, even if the album sucks, you know, your day will probably be better. Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So fake profile, before we go, so fake profiles have been uh, a problem online lately, and so is the t-shirt people. You know, like, oh, yeah. how, how do you combat that? I mean, it's got to be just maddening if people are left and right, just constantly doing it, you know, and they're doing it to all the I guys. Think for me, you know, for me, it's uh, I, you know, there's somebody trying to scam my fans on Facebook pretty much every day, um, with a, you know, a, a fake James Urban page. Um and then I get fans sending them to me like, oh, is this you? I've, I thought I've been talking to you. I was like, why would you think you've been talking to me if this person has zero followers, follows nobody, right. and has like two of the same pictures from my page that you do follow that has 171,000 followers and a blue check mark, and I actually right. post on it. <laughs> right, right, right. Why, why do you think I have time to, to, to talk to you personally, one-on-one, right. -on -one, right. and ask you for to send me uh you know gift cards for walmart and starbucks right like <laughs> let me do that you know i'll, I'll take a starbucks <laughs> gift card but don't you know yeah and then i'm not you know, and the people who are banking it. info yeah and the fans you know they may be you know they're innocent and maybe they're easily <clears throat> duped and they mean well and then all of yeah. a sudden you know it can tarnish something that you have not literally nothing to do with you're just it's a wednesday <laughs> And five people are scamming on your name. But how do you combat that? Is Facebook and the other social media people you just, accommodating? You, you got to flag them and you got to block them and hide all your content from them and report them. And uh, that's that's all you can do. So it's yeah, it's weird. I I, I don't know. It's it's not it's not an enjoyable thing to have to do right. uh, all the time. It's definitely annoying. It's uh, but there's a lot of things of like, 
Right. Well, if if you want to do if you want to do music as a career, right. you know, or be an artist, um, right. then you have to. There's things that come with that. You know, there's 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 bullshit. There's a lot of bullshit that follows. It's like right. if you see like a shark or a whale swimming, like they have a bunch of like feeders a bunch of fish that some of them are like suckers that are like clinging onto their backs. And then they have other ones that swim around and, you know, oh, yeah. eat the shit off their tails. So, you know, there's like, there's, there's always going to be those ones, you know, there's yeah, always going to be those little, uh, those it's little fish. You know. yeah. <laughs> those people don't know. They have no idea. You know, they think it's ha ha, whatever. They're making a couple of bucks, but they have no idea how much work and years of time and effort and, no sleep and not seeing your family and in all you know they have no that's just ridiculous but anyway what are you gonna do but the, they won't do any legal the, the social media companies won't do any legal action or is it too hard to find them yeah i think it's too hard to find them and you know the 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 social media companies are so big you know i i also think of like they're they're trying to keep a lot of a lot of bad stuff off of those platforms because right. you know people go live and do some, do some awful things. So yeah, they're right. trying to make sure that those things don't go live. They're trying to make right. sure that they, you know, catch criminals and, and find people being awful and, and, uh, and, and all that too. So if someone's trying to uh, scam a fan out of, uh, out of some, like, it's like, so you should just be able to like list. upload some consciousness to like your collective fans and just being like, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you for money unless I'm going to give you a CD or like an officially licensed merch item, you right. know, in exchange or a ticket to a show. I'm not going right. to ask you your bank account info or ask you to wire me $10,000 or any money. You're not wiring me shit, you know? <laughs> right. Just, just you, you, you follow, you like, you comment. And you know, if I, if I post a link, <laughs> Maybe click the link, watch the video, and uh, yeah. and if you want to buy the CD from my website, do that, or download it, or stream it, or or whatever. Right. You know, it's it's. I'm in eight bands. Uh, I, I I'm an independent contractor. Right. I, I have a great gig with Peloton and and uh, design music based uh, fitness video game levels uh, for their program Lane Break that I helped develop and. Right. Uh, and do that and then play in eight bands and got a wife and three kids and own a house. And, and, uh, you know, there's, there's so much else going on. That's not just, yeah. you know, being creative and trying to be an artist. Oh, for sure. And, uh, but it's I love playing play. music and I love every opportunity to play music and, and, uh, and, and give everything, every single chance I get to entertain an audience. Like if you have the opportunity to make a fan, right. you know, and, and I even say this too, like if anybody listens to my music or listens to Clean Break or Durbin or James Durbin or the Quiet Riot albums or whatever, like it's, uh, <clears throat> if, if you, li even if it's not for you, just the fact that you, you clicked it, you know, that's a win. Just oh, the absolutely. fact that you listen to it for five seconds, 10 seconds, the whole song, right. uh, you know, just to see if you like it, that's a win. You know, oh, absolutely. a view like, is a win. A subscribe yeah. is a win. You know, it's it's all a win. But I I I, I try to be, I, I really try to uh, to focus on positivity and try not to ever um, compare my accomplishments to the accomplishments of others because sure. my journey is my own. My successions are my own successions. Yeah. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Just trying to be positive and like here we have, fun. we have we have a small show. And but it's mm -hmm. growing and it's doing well, and Always. I'm just blown away by the fact that in their top ten countries is Russia and and um, Ukraine. Crazy. So there's wow. people in, who are getting bombed <laughs> yeah. for listening to my fart jokes and our conversation. I think that is like the coolest thing. That while everything <laughs> around them is in chaos, they choose yeah. to pick this. Yeah, this is their like, this is their yeah, escape. Yeah, it's amazing. And of course, you know, you get that a million times over, but, yeah. uh, you know, but uh, yeah, man, you've been a, you've been a great interview. Thank you so much for coming on. Good luck Thank with you. your album and uh, clean break. We are the fire and also good break our, uh, clean break reaction uh, for coming home from last, from the last release of clean break. And we wish you nothing but the best James. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you guys. Good. I appreciate you.
All right, man. And uh, thank you, James. Keep kicking ass. We'll see you next time. Awesome. Sounds good. Peace, love. Thanks again. Rock and roll.